Almost 200 million years ago, a nimble carnivorous archosaur roamed the deserts of what would become North America. Two crests of bone jutted from its brow, forming the crown on the king of the early Jurassic. This was Dilophosaurus. Dilophosaurus lived 184 million years ago in the Kayenta Formation, which is in what is now the American Southwest. It would have been covered in scales, possibly some simple feathers, and probably primitive spines. If it were living today, it would be in the running for the largest predator on land, being close in size to the polar bear. Dilophosaurus was the apex predator of its ecosystems. Adult Dilophosaurus specimens would have measured up to 20 feet in length, around 8.2 feet in height at the hips, and are estimated to have weighed up to 1,100 pounds, or 500 kilograms. It had a slender, elongated build, with a long, relatively narrow skull adorned with the aforementioned pair of semicircular plate-like crests. The crests were made of bone and ran along the top of the skull, starting near the front of the snout and extending over the back of the skull. A recent study changed our understanding of the structure of Dilophosaurus's crests. While it used to be believed that they were closer to the center of the top of the head, they are now believed to be closer to the edge, smooth with the sides of the animal's face. Also, they would have been larger than we previously knew, and they were thought to have keratin sheaths like many modern birds, making them even larger. Dilophosaurus's crests could have had many functions but the primary functions are thought to have been sexual display and temperature regulation. The crests could have had bright colors, like we see on the beaks of modern birds, and also would have had intricate vasculature. This vasculature would have allowed it to change how much heat it shed and the coloration of the crests by constricting or dilating the veins. The Lophosaurus had a set of sharp serrated teeth and a notch behind the first row of teeth in the upper jaw which gave its snout a somewhat kinked appearance. It had long, slender, three-fingered hands with claws, and powerful hind legs with three forward-facing toes and a smaller rear-facing one. Its tail was noticeably long and thin, functioning as a counterbalance for its body and aiding in maneuverability. It is worth noting that contrary to popular depictions, specifically that of Jurassic Park, there is currently no evidence that Dilophosaurus had a frill or that it could spit venom, these are purely fictional attributes. Dilophosaurus inhabited a relatively flat environment with occasional seasonal climates and an ecosystem transitioning towards desert conditions with rainy summers and dry winters, similar to present-day Senegal. This formation was situated at the southern edge of a great desert in its time, with the desert influence gradually becoming predominant as North America drifted northward into the arid desert belt. Preserved sedimentary structures show deposits from streams, lakes, and floodplains. The Kayenta Formation is composed of sandstone layers of siltstone, where dinosaur tracks and freshwater mussels and snails have been found. Dilophosaurus shared this environment with other dinosaur species such as Scutellosaurus and Cerosaurus, as well as many other sauropodomorphs and crocodilians. The Kayenta Formation also housed a wide variety of non-archosaurian fauna. Invertebrates like the freshwater ostracods, snails, and bivalves were found in this formation, as well as very diverse fish fauna, including cartilaginous fish like primitive sharks, as well as a few ray-finned fish and many lobe-finned fish species. Compared to other theropods like the tyrannosaurs, its jaws would not be as effective for dispatching prey. However, its large hands and claws would have made its forelimbs quite able to grapple larger prey, likely dealing damage with the claws simultaneously with its jaws. In addition, the notch in its jaw would have made it more capable of preying upon fish. This is a similar adaptation to what can be seen in Spinosaurids like Spinosaurus and Baryonyx. These tools, along with its size, like previously mentioned, placed it as the top predator of its ecosystem and meant it would have posed a serious threat to anything it encountered. No specifics of Dilophosaurus's reproductive behaviors are known, however it probably wouldn't have been able to make a nest or brood like modern birds because of their simple integument and size. They more likely buried their eggs like modern crocodilians or built vegetation mounds to incubate their eggs like the living bush turkeys. The parental care after hatching is also unknown. There could have been none like many modern lizards, or it could have practiced care more like modern crocodilians or even ground birds. The cause of Dilophosaurus's extinction is unknown, 
but it was likely a victim of the general background extinction rate rather than being pushed to extinction by a major event like an eruption or impact. In any healthy ecosystem, there are a number of predatory species in competition. In addition, Pangaea had only recently broken up, meaning that the major continents were quite close and fauna from all continents could migrate to one another relatively easily, creating a hotbed for competition and refinement. The drifting of North America northwards at the time and the increasing aridity of their environment could have also caused their extinction. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. And if you have any thoughts, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Have a good day, everyone.